but, uh, but th that's, that's simply the reality. Um, I'm not sure anyone quite knows what's out there and what complicating factors may come to play as a result of those kinds of, uh, of revelations. I mean, I can say the other obvious point, which is it doesn't make things any easier. Um, it, it confronts uh, political leaders in uh, countries with whom we work very closely with all kinds of issues that put them in a, a very difficult position. Um, and so anything that does that uh, makes things a little bit harder. But again, over the long run, will this have a serious impact? Hard to tell because it's, it's still going on. Your uh, cooperation with the Russians is going on, or has it been My cooperation with the Russians has not changed as a result of this that I'm aware of. Um, it's, it seems to be proceeding apace. <coughs> Anyone else here wants to respond to that? No? Okay. Yes. Um, Are you is my name? I'm the ambassador for Federal Nigeria. And then I said to in this program to be able to uh, get some ideas and to what the panel would think. Um, quite a lot of the issues I would like to raise are related by the map law because uh, at first we, we have this book on Poland and Nigeria. Two, we, we have attended uh, my mission uh, recommended for Nigeria's ambition to be the global council global uh, global terrorism after the two meetings. One, we are, we are still trying to around our own in, in a way they are hosting around our own and sometimes uh, so. The problem though is my immediate answer to the question, or this is the, the talk was framed from the question. Yes, counterterrorism strategies can be included, can coexist. And we try to, exactly that's what we try to do in Nigeria. It has been very, very, very difficult. For simple reason, <coughs> all those elements of the workers are being frustrated by this by these terrorists. We have a case, especially with a group that refused to uh, uh, identify itself to contribute to, uh, to identify as individuals, wanting the creation of, uh, of a state, of a separate state, to affirm the constitution. These are some values, some standard values that are not even shared by those by those Muslims who then commit themselves and who go to, to, to schools, mother place, to, to generalize people, and therefore, um, and the point is, with the experience of a long term of military regime, the president of the country and the, and, uh, has been trying to shy away from any tendency, any, anything that will make it smack of violence in our lives. We declared the state of emergency in those three countries, and then made the demonstrate the structures in place. We have not established any extrajudicial institution to try this to do. In everything we do, we try them in civilian court. And we try to, 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 to be as democratic and to, 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 to maintain certain uh, respect for human rights principles as much as possible. Then the problem, I mean, I mean you know, it's the normal, the, the, the definitely their testimony is, you know, it's serious because the kind of ongoing is going to us and American Even at the last moment when my president went to make President Obama, is the issue of how do you ensure that peace for human rights are respected when dealing with the terrorists? It's been very big. I know it can happen. There were serious, serious challenges, but right? all kinds of cooperation with the US government on how to do this. One of these ECTA meetings and the where we the binational commission agreement direct that this own regional cooperation and uh, regional, yeah, regional security. So that the problem is when you are faced with that kind of, in fact, the feeling in many parts of Nigeria is that Boko Haram has been taken off for so long because the government has not taken sufficient measures to need this EU to this 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 menace in the world. Because these people are terrified who are terrorizing the whole country. They can't even be identified. And they don't even know what they stand for. And yet you arrest them, take them to prison, the legal process takes so long a time, and then some of them escape from prison, some of them are out of bail, and when they're out of bail, they go back to join these people and they and they continue to perpetrate all these terrorist activities. So the problem, the, the people are saying, where do you place your emphasis? You want to, uh, you want to be a democratic state to exist, then it has to be existing before you can even try to democratic within it. So that's the problem we have. And you know, I'm sure Mr. Norman is aware of me. In fact, there is so many questions, which is what, what, what we have asked. Because I am the new testament, and we are attending many of these meetings, and I know that there is that 
serious problem. You really have to have a state that is secure before you can practice democracy in that state. And so when you talk of respect human rights, human rights of who? In the human rights of terrorists or human rights of victims? So we're talking about uh, effort is based on prevention. Are you violating the human rights of the terrorists when you try to solicit information, to get information from me that will prevent a future terrorist act? Is that, is that, and we say you're violating human rights? Those are necessary things we have to do to go to counter these terrorists. So it's an ongoing debate between us and the State Department and the next thing of GCTF is quite a good, good state to, that, that the American government has taken. They are completely fully in there. I was in the Abuja last, uh, last meeting, it was postponed because of the shutdown. I hope the next one will come. And there are so many countries that are involved in terrorism, uh, who are terrorism, who have been victims of terrorism, that are coming and we are sharing experience. It's a good one to go. The simple thing is that there has to be, we have to draw the line between is it the scale of the state you want to place importance on, or the, 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 the issue of human rights of terrorists or people. Because the, the, there was this issue, that's a, an example of the, the case of mine. You, you try to trust, there must be, the American government was insisting on elections being taken place before you can deal with, before you can deal with the issue of the rebellion. Well, it eventually happened. We all know that. So because when the French came in, came in there with their full force, they, 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 they then came, they then came up to the U.S. government that they, they enforced the enforced the enforcement section has to go on. You have to create a, a conducive environment before democracy can survive. Right. If you cannot, if you can't, if you don't have a state, where is democracy? Where is human rights? It has to exist within the state. I don't emphasize enforcement, security. You simply cannot have democracy. It's as simple as that. So we will draw the line. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. Uh, anyone wants to react to this time? Uh, uh, we will. Uh, yes. I, I would just make one point that, that, um, that I mean, you put your finger on the, on the problem. Um, if it were easy, uh, we wouldn't have a terrorist problem anywhere. It, it, it is a real challenge. And I think your larger point is a very valid one. It is to some extent a chicken and egg situation. You need to have good governance, but you also need security to be able to have that good governance. But if you don't have good governance, you may not have security. So how do you decide which of these comes first? It's a, it's a, uh, it, it, that, that's the challenge. But I think, I think the one thing I would take mild exception to is you made the point about the, you know, human rights for terrorists versus human rights for everyone else. Well, yeah, and I think I think that's that's a very important point because the first human right is the right to remain alive and unmolested in your home by terrorists or by anybody else, so you have to maintain that. But I think the problem is that one has to be careful when confronting terrorism and talking about the human rights of terrorists to be sure that what you're talking about are people who are convict are, are, are defined as terrorists through accepted, legitimate, democratic procedures. Um, that not, not everyone is a terrorist that's sympathetic to the views of terrorists, um, and you know, there, there is a, I think a good example is there is, there are legitimate political beliefs that one can act on. The question is how one acts on them. I mean, it's a cliche, but terrorism is a tool. It is a bad thing. There's nothing inherently wrong with wanting to establish a separate country out of a province somewhere or to um, develop some sort of new system of government somewhere. The question is what kind of tools you're using to do it and how you establish which tools are illegitimate has to be done through a, legit through a, a legitimate democratic process. And that's the real challenge when you're confronted with the security well, threat. I'm like talking I'm about. Saying, I'm just let you go because it's simply, I mean, when you have people who really want to be strong, the essential, the essential democratic structure, the only whole thing to, 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 to end, where do you start to I think it's all, we're talking about human rights here, but what it boils down is due process. If you follow the due process of investigation, of um, collecting evidence and proving it to court, if you don't have to worry about human rights because that's only included. Mm -hmm. what, what you can do, whether it, how you can ask your questions, how you can confront uh, whoever is the suspect, but bottom line is innocent, presumed innocent, uh, the presumption of innocence before 
the court decides, the person is guilty. It's very complicated, I know. You, you might have seen it with your own eyes, and you isolate this person, you try to get information as much as possible, but you cannot talk to the person. You can have anything else. Um, uh, you can have uh, investigation tactics, interrogation tactics, but, but you cannot, one cannot torture anybody, regardless whether it's terrorist or not. You don't have to torture, get information to prevent it from committing those acts of terrorism. I understand, what you're saying. I understand what you're saying. Um, it's, a, it's always a constant battle between the need for uh, security and the need for uh, human rights and civil liberties. And I think a lot of it is, is, is common sense. Uh, there's, there's no absolute rights. Like, probably the closest thing that the United States considers an absolute right is the First Amendment, freedom of, to say what you want. But yet, there's, there's legal precedent that you can't shout fire in a crowded theater. That's against the law. So, therefore, there are limits on almost, there can be limits on almost every right. A lot of it is common sense on, on just not exceeding the bounds of, of common sense and, and logic. Okay, uh, we have time for one more question. There was something there. And so, well, any any other people want to ask a word? Oh, well, if that's the case, let me, uh, Thank you again, the panelists, uh, for your very profound uh, insights. And uh, clearly, it's, uh, the beginning is, we say, not the end of uh, dialogue. We'll continue and uh, we'll extend the invitation to our colleagues from the diplomatic community to participate actively in our work. Uh, I would like to again thank uh, the ILI and Kim and Maze here for their support and uh, the um, Inter-University Center and the International Center on Terrorism Studies at the Potomac. Uh, Lydia for recording uh, this session is going to be um, broadcast and uh, as I said we're going to have also reports. I would like to also thank Marianne right here for uh, your support to organize our activities and Sharon and our um, interns will just stand up the next generation will be called of uh, scholars and students um, and um, we'll keep you posted on our next uh, session I think we're planning one at the end of this month on the lone wolf phenomenon and I think we have to pay uh, much greater attention to this particular uh, challenge. But again, working within the framework of, of law and uh, justice as well. So thank you very much and good evening. Thank you.